You know, James compares the tongue to a little fire that can a little fire. He compares it to the rudder of a ship, though being one of the smallest members of the ship does so much to control what that ship does. Our tongues are extremely powerful. Our tongues have, as the proverb says, control of death and life. Or the power of the tongue. We can do either one with it. We can preach the gospel of Christ, or we can do evil with it. But the results are what makes the difference. Look what it says. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it, if you preach the gospel, you love it. If you're in the evil, you're loving or you wouldn't be in it. But look what it says. Shall eat the fruit thereof. In other words, you'll suffer the consequences. If you go with the truth, if you go with, with, the, with life, the power that you have with what you say, then the results will be good. But if you devil into things, devil, I didn't mean to take my... I mean, if you get into the things that the devil does, then consequences are not going to be good. We are accountable for everything we do. But we're accountable for everything we say. I want you to look now, and, and Jesus, I, I love it when the Bible proves itself. You know, you go to one place in the Bible and you read a statement, then you go to another place and you read a statement, and it says the same thing, but in different words. Jesus is going to say the same thing now. We're going to look at it. He's going to say the same thing, but he's going to say it in a more clear way that you can understand. It's easier to understand. Let's look at what he says. He, he says, in, in the book of Matthew chapter 12, beginning verse 33, listen to what he says. Either make the tree good and the fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and its fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by its fruit. Good or death and life. Verse 34, O generation of vipers, how can you be, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh, a good man out of the treasures of his heart bringeth forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil of his heart bringeth forth evil things. But I say unto you that every idle word that a man speaks, they shall give account thereof in the days of judgment, for by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. That's saying the same thing that the proverb said. And that's the theme of the Bible. We are responsible for our actions. We're responsible for what we do. We're responsible for what we teach. We can either bring good things or bad things by what we say. We have a choice in that. Now, I know sometimes we lose our tempers. That's why it's important that we watch what we say. That's why it's important that we watch what we do. The tongue has so much power to influence other people. You can tell a child over and over how bad they are, and pretty soon it won't be bad. Or you can tell a child over and over again how good they are and what good they can do, and they'll be good. We can push a child in the direction we mold that child. And when we can continually criticize children, then we keep tearing them down. They don't learn to hate you. They learn to hate themselves. When you tear a child down continually and beat it and beat it and beat it with your words you say, your criticism, they learn to hate themselves. And so with other people too, with adults, the same thing can occur. If we keep tearing people down with our voice and with our words, then, then it can be very harmful. Look at what, again, at the word the Proverbs in chapter 12, verse 18. There is, there is that speaketh like a piercing a sword. What's it say? The, the word of God like a two-edged sword pierced even down to the deepest marrow of the bone. But the tongue of the wise is healthy. Why not build that child up? Why not build that person up? Now we have to be careful how we build up too. We can't build up that's not there. You can't tell I, I, I don't know how to use that. I can't do that way. I, 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 so many times, I, 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 I'll be honest with you, I've seen bug babies that was absolutely ugly. And I've heard people say, that's the prettiest thing I ever seen. 
needs to be the truth and not something you're just trying to make somebody feel good about. Our tongue can be very valuable tools. Think about it. The proverb says, 10 and 12, the tongue of the just is a choice silver. Why is the tongue of the just a source of silver? Because it helps. It teaches. It cares. It loves. That's what that choice is all about. That's why the just shall live by faith. It goes on to say the heart of the wicked is is little worth or no good or worthless. Thank you. It's better to correct someone in something they do than it is to build them up in something that's wrong. Again, I'm saying my own words, but look what the proverb says. It says, He that rebuketh the man afterwards shall find more favor than he that flattereth with the tongue. We have to be careful how we do things. And our tongue can be wicked or it can be good. It can build somebody up when it shouldn't build someone. We need to be careful that we don't flatter someone to the point that they embarrass themselves in some other way. Like we may take a, a young man who's not real sharp, maybe a little bit slow, and he sings and he can't sing a lick. I mean, it's some of the worst singing you've ever heard. And everybody's attempt to make him feel good, they tell him how good he is. So then he goes somewhere else and sings. And they don't treat him that way. They treat him, they tell him the truth. Then there's so much pain and sorrow in that person because they look back and say, well, they said I was good and here I am. We need to take care. Listen to what Paul said. Paul said in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 25, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. But that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearer. If you've not got something good to say, don't say it. That's not hard to understand. That's real easy to understand. You don't have to tear someone down. Just don't say anything about it. But don't let corruptness come out of your mouth. Don't speak things that destroy us. Speak things that edify, that build up. You, you know our, our, our talking, our voice, our words that we say. And, and, and I know everybody is responsible for their own salvation. I understand that. But your words can destroy people. You evil little boy. What's that do to that little boy? When you talk about someone in, in, a, in, a, in a downward way, tearing them down, what's it do to them? It breaks their spirit. You can break a person's spirit to the point that they can't come out of what they need to do. But our words can also lead to salvation. When we tell a person about Jesus Christ and how they can have the same thing that, that anyone else can have, Proverbs 15 and 4 says, A wholesome tongue is a tree of life. Isn't it better to be a tree of life than it is death? To encourage someone to be a part of the body of Christ? But I've sinned to the point that I don't thank God for forgive, forgive, forgive me. We need to instruct that person in the fact that God can forgive all sin. God can forgive every person on earth for everything they've ever done wrong. Don't let the person tire themselves down. Build them up. Let them know that they can repent of that sin. They can change their life. And they can be better than that. Look what else it says. But the perver perverseness. That's talking about a perverted person. But a perverseness. There is a breach in the spirit. Or a breaking of the spirit. When we take that which is there and tear a person down and make them feel small. I've seen, I've seen some good bosses in my life. I've seen some that wasn't worth a dime. But I've seen some good bosses that could dress you down and tell you everything you've done wrong, but make you appreciate when you leave. That's the way a boss should do. It's okay to dress a person down and tell them what they've done wrong, but don't dress them down and tear them down to the point that they give up. And that could be our family, that could be anyone. Let's look at some of the Old Testament in the book of Genesis. Knowledge can be used for good or evil. Knowledge is the point, okay? Let's look at the point here. In Genesis chapter 2 and verse 9, it says, And out of the ground uh, made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. But also in that garden, 
tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now let's understand what we're talking about here. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil. When Adam was in, when Adam and Eve was in the garden of Eden, did they know what good was? Absolutely, because God said everything that he created was good. And in the, in, in the last day, in the sixth day when he created that day, and the day ended, he looked at everything and said it was very good. So they had the concept of what was good. So when they protected the, bark, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, what did they get? They understood what evil was. Let's look at what it says in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 22. It says, And the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become as one of us to know good and evil. And now, uh, lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of the life of life and eat and live forever. So what did God have to do? God had to expel them from the Garden of Eden to prevent them from living eternally at that time. Living eternally in sin? They would live, they would live eternally and never die a physical death. Not because of evil, not because of good, but because of evil. <coughs> Look at verse 24. It says, So he drove out the man, and he placed in the east of the garden to beat the cherubims and a flaming sword, which turned away, turned every way, to keep the way of the tree of life. Once they gained this knowledge, God was not going to allow them to use that for evil purposes and live eternally. God had to do something to stop that. <coughs> Think about something. You know, we're talking about things here, and it's not mentioned the tongue one time of the thing we said. How do we convert a soul? It's not by our actions. Our actions can help to convert a soul because a person can see what we do. But I don't care what we do if that person never hears the word of God, he's not going to be converted. We're not going to change him. We're going to have to teach him from the word. Look, look, look at what James said in chapter 5, verse 19 and 20. He makes a statement here. He said, Brethren, and if any of you do err from the truth and one converts him, let him know that he which converts the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. Then how can we convert a soul from error? God gives the way. No, I missed that. Where is it? Right there it is. 1 Corinthians 1 and 18, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto them which are saved it is the power of God. The preaching of the word. And this is talking about teaching. It isn't just talking about me standing up here. It's talking about you standing out there. That's what it's talking about. And that's what we have to do. We have to be able to go out and to teach people the Word of God. And we do that by our mouths. We don't do it by sitting around. Our actions are important. And don't ever think our actions are not important. People see everything we do. But no matter how much we do, we have to preach the Word in order to convert people. In order to convert people. And in order to go to heaven. We have to learn to control this tongue. And that's one of the hardest things in the world to control. If you look, if you remember what James says, a little fire kindles the forest. It'll burn down a whole forest in a short time, a small fire. It don't take a lot. Like I said this morning in Bible study, if we turned all these lights out and it's midnight, if you had one little match lit, it would dispel the darkness. Light can overtake darkness if we allow it to happen, if we work on it. Our tongues can lead people to the truth. As a matter of fact, that's the only thing that's going to lead people to the truth. But we must guard. We must protect what we say with everything that we can. Because we need to watch every word that comes out of our mouth. Again, Proverbs 21 and 23. Whosoever keepeth his mouth and his tongue keepeth his soul from troubles. Now this keeping his mouth and his tongue means controlling it. A child don't know how to control his tongue. It really, it, it has no uh, experience to base it upon. So a child's just liable to say anything. When you open your mouth, if you're not careful, more will come out than what you want to. Again, I've said it before. How many times have you said something just wish you could reach out there and grab it? 
I've said that before. Everybody's guilty. Every time we open our mouth, the more we say, the more trouble we get in. There's an old proverb, at least it's not a Bible proverb. It's better to let people think you're stupid than it is to open your mouth and prove it. You can put whatever what words you want to in there, but, 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 but I think it says a fool in some situations. It comes out different ways. But sometimes we open our mouth and just put out too much stuff. People say, man, why don't he shut his mouth? Proverbs chapter 13, verse 5, 3. He that keepeth his mouth keepeth his life. That's not something. Yeah. You know, he that keepeth his mouth keepeth his life. But he that openeth wide his lips shall be destruction. Sometimes the more we talk, the more deeper in trouble we get. If you ever get stopped by a police officer, just answer his question. Don't offer anything extra. Because when you offer that which is extra, then he's listening to everything you say. He's not trying to catch you in something and, and put, put you in jail. But you need to be more tentative to what we say. And it's with other people too. Sometimes you'll be trying to help someone and you start out talking before you know you're blabbing so much you, you've led them totally away from what you were doing. Sometimes we're teaching the Word of God to someone and we need to stop where we're at. We've convinced them. Then stop. What happened on the day of Pentecost? Do you realize Peter didn't finish his sermon? It says while he was speaking, they said, Men and brethren, what shall we do? What did he do? He stopped his sermon and baptized some 3,000 people with help. That's what you do. He didn't keep going and say, now wait a minute, I'm not finished with my sermon. Give me about 15 more minutes, then I'll answer your question. He didn't do that. He stopped. Sometimes we need to know when to stop talking. When to refrain from talking. Peter said in 1 Peter 3 and 10, for he, for he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil. Now, sometimes we need to refrain from the good things we're saying and go ahead like Peter did and go ahead and take care of this one. But we need to refrain our tongues from evil. We need to control our tongues to the point that the evil don't come out. The more we talk, the more we put out. The more likely we are to say something we should not say. Now, I'm not saying it's not good to have a good conversation. And we need to do that. But there needs to be control in what we say. There needs to be edification in what we say. Lack of control, as we said a few minutes ago, leads to destruction. Look what James said in verse, chapter 1, verse 26. If any man among you seek to be religious and bridle not his tongue. What's a bridle do? You put that bridle in that horse's mouth, you control him any way you want to. He will go the way you tell him to go because you control his head. Now, and it says, if any man among you seem to be religious and bridles not his tongue or doesn't control what he says, but deceives his own heart, this man's religion is in vain. In other words, he deceives himself in the things that he says when he needs to have more control. <laughs> control is an important factor in every aspect of our life. But in particular, when we're talking, words hurt. How many times have someone said something to you and it just burned you to the bone? It just, it just hurts you so bad that you didn't say anything. And it's better that you didn't because you probably said something that would cause the matter to be worse. And sometimes someone may have said something to you, you may have said something back, and it made it worse. Those things happen in our life. We need to learn to speak softly. Proverbs 15 and 1, a soft answer turneth away wrath. But grievous words stare at In other words, when someone makes something, a, 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 controlling yourself and giving the right answer not to make the situation worse is always better. If you can. It's not easy to do, and I'm not telling you I can always do that. I've done it. I say the wrong thing so many times, and I know it. Like you've said it, you've said it, but it said, grievous words stir up anger. If that person says something to offend you 
and you come back with something to offend them, what happened? It just goes on and on and on. So we need to learn to use words that are kinder and more gentle. Proverbs 25 and 15 says, But long forbearance is a prince persuaded, and a soft tongue breaketh the bone. Speak softly and carry a big stick. Speak softly and control what you're doing. Because let me tell you something, when you return someone's anger with kindness, it hurts them. Sometimes they feel it, sometimes they don't. But we need to be that person. You remember we just got through going to, in our Bible study through the uh, uh, Beatitudes, and one of those Beatitudes is peacemaker. That's who we need to be. We need to bring one, we need to be the one that brings silence to the situation, that calms the situation down, that makes everyone feel more comfortable. We need not to cause a worse problem than what we've already got. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse, beginning at verse 20. Paul, Paul wrote to Timothy here and said, Flee also youthful lust, but follow after righteousness, charity, peace, with them that call on the name of the Lord in pure heart. But foolish, listen to this. This is like, this is really addressing some problems that we've had here before where people bring up things that don't need to be brought up. Uh, hypothetical situations and things. But listen to what it says here. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do gender strife. 24, and the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach and patient. If we're not bringing up a subject, we're talking about something that's going to build up the congregation. So let's avoid that. I'm not saying avoid some teachings of the Bible. I'm never saying avoid anything in the Bible that's being taught. But to bring up things that call that could possibly cause strife, just to be bringing them up, is not is not useful. And we need to control ourselves better than that. We need to get knowledge. We need to know the situation before we talk. We need to understand where we're at. You know, I think knowledge knowledge leads to kind words. If we say things, if we understand the situation, we're going to be kinder. Now, look, look at Proverbs 31 26. She opened her mouth with wisdom. That means she thought before she spoke. She opened her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of I know we've heard that statement with people saying, well, well, he spoke before he thought. Well, yeah, we do that sometimes. We don't think it out before we, th before we say something and we end up bringing up worse things than what we had to start with. So we need to be careful. We need to protect what we say. We need to watch what we say. We need to be careful with the words that we use even. I, I'm, I'm strongly opposed to using the issue. I'm trying to think of how you use the word. Use the isms. It's words substituted for words. In other words, we use this word because it sounds better than this word, but it means the same thing as that word. We need to be careful with those things. We need to be careful with what we say, knowing that it's the wrong thing to say. So we substitute a word that people won't frown on as much. Colossians chapter 4, verse 6. Let your speech always be always with grace. Where's grace come from? God. So when we start speaking, we need to think about the Word of God and everything that we say. The, is this the right way to proceed as a Christian? Let your speech be always with grace. Seasoned with salt. Remember we studied last Wednesday, I think it was, on on more of the salt of the earth. So, so we need to be careful. We need to season it just right so, so that it sounds right. I'm not saying put sugar on it. I'm saying salt. Season it right. 
that you may know how you ought to answer every man. Think before you speak. Use the knowledge that you have as a Christian before you speak. Have your understanding of God's Word in your mind before you speak. Sometimes I've had people ask questions here and I've not answered for a few seconds. I've sat there and I thought, well, wait a minute. How am I going to answer this question? Sometimes I don't come out right. Of course, we all do that. Finally, this evening, I have to add one thing to this that, that I think is very important. And we've talked about it before. It's nothing new. But sometimes approaching it from a little bit different direction gives us a little bit better understanding. Singing involves the tongue. Singing involves teaching. It's very, very important that we understand what we sing and that what we sing is scripture. Look again at the verse we've studied before. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. Wisdom with knowledge gives us understanding, and that's what we need to do. Let the words of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. Teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual singing, singing with grace unto the name uh, and to your, in your heart to the Lord. Teaching <coughs> and admonishing one another. Admonishing one another is building one another up. We can't do that when songs are not right. Verse 17, And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. Let's add to this. Let's listen to what we're saying here. He's saying here when we sing... We sing with wisdom. We teach. We build up. And we have to do it according to God's word. Because he says everything you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. If we can't show where that song is a spiritual song, a, 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 a correct song religiously, or a correct song according to the Bible, we don't need to be singing. So when we sing, Let's think also what our tongues are saying, what our tongues are teaching. It's important. We need to control our tongues to the point that we do it exactly as God has told us to do. And we need to work on that every day of our lives and everything that we say and do. And it includes our singing, our prayers, our discussion with each other before services, after services, and during services, and everywhere we are. We need to take care. If you're here and you're not a member of the body of Christ, you need to be. You've heard the word of God, now you have an opportunity to choose, either to believe or not to believe. If you choose not to believe, then you'll leave this building in the same condition you're in. If you choose to believe, then you can repent of your sin, as God would have commanded you to do. And if you repent of your sins, then you can confess Jesus Christ before men and be baptized for the remission of your sins. And then begin that journey with God. If along the line you're a member of the body of Christ, you've slipped and fall, you use your tongue in the wrong way, maybe. Maybe you've been blaspheming God. Maybe you've used God's name in vain. Maybe you've done some things you shouldn't be doing with your mouth or any other way. Then you can repent of that and ask God to forgive you and he'll welcome you back. If you need our help in any way, let us know why we're all standing and why we're standing.